Hi, I'm Bob Vila. Welcome home again to Bob's house in Cambridge. We're far along with the demolition. This is our third visit here, and today we're going to be giving you a tour so that you can see what the bare bones of this house are really like. We're also getting together with a structural engineer who's giving us a good assessment of just how bad the bones are. And Riley's here along with some fellows from Fort Hill Construction who are going to help us put in a rather massive beam that will be carrying much of the third and second floors. Stick around. It's good to have you home again. Okay, well, demolition is completed around here, and at this point, there's a lot of archaeology, really, that we can talk about. This was the front hall closet from the 1970s remodel, and what we discovered was that the front porch went across the whole width of the house, and here are the original floorboards from that same porch I was just out on, outside. And what they did in the 70s uh, remodel was they just put these sleepers over it and just plywooded right over the thing. No insulation. This is before the energy crisis. Look at this. <clears throat> this is a collection of uh, micro lambs, beams that uh, have, are going to be put together. And in fact, this obviously is not the kind of do it yourself for job that anybody would want to contemplate on a weekend. We have our engineer here, we have a crew of carpenters, and we're going to be working with this and showing you how the whole house is being restructured and carried on to this. But first, let's take a look in here our living room, which is our kind of uh, working headquarters in the house. We've taken some precautions, for example, to protect the hardwood floors that are here. We've simply taken up the carpeting, the wall-to-wall -wall from the second floor, and laid it down upside down so that we don't harm the oak floors. We've removed all of our doors, and we have them lined up here, labeled, numbered. We've removed a lot of the hinges. They're all red brass, original 1897. Many of these doors will be reutilized in the house, but they have to have the paint removed. Uh, same deal with the moldings. But interestingly enough, it might not make sense to dip and strip the moldings. It might be cheaper to just go out and replicate them in poplar at a local mill, just copy them. Although that wouldn't be the case with something like this. This is the front porch railing which we've taken down. And that indeed is something that we would want to take and have professionally uh, stripped so that we can reuse it. Another thing that we found last week in our kind of archaeological study of the house is a pocket door. And the architect's plans for the house called to close in this doorway so that we'd have a big blank wall on the living room side and on the den side. And it's hard to make decisions like this when you, when you discover something. We, we don't know exactly what we're going to do yet. We did find out that one of the problems with the hardwood floors being very squeaky, we, we found out the reason was that they had been nailed very inappropriately, both in this room and in several upstairs rooms. And we found a newspaper underneath the flooring from 1934, which indicates that you know this was not original 1897. And in fact, whoever put it down may have been a weekend warrior, but they didn't put enough nails on it. This is original, and it's interesting. This is all cypress trim work in this room, in the library, as well as what was in the kitchen. And it's interesting because we had found an 1897 newspaper article from Cambridge that explained to us that the house was all painted wood except for the library and the kitchen, which were done in Cyprus. But let's get together with our structural engineer. Rene Mounier is a licensed structural engineer. Hello. Hi, Rene. How are you? You Very know, good, thank you. When I first looked at this thing, I said, oh, really? This big? How do you figure out just what size a carrying beam has to be? Well, the most difficult part is to find out exactly all the load which are supposed to be carried by that beam. Now, what are some of the loads that you had to deal with in this house? In this case, we had uh, to support a portion of the roof, which was actually improperly supported and was supported by some partition. Uh, we had to support the second floor framing, mm -hmm. which was supporting on a, on a wall. And we had to support the ceiling of above the kitchen, which is the second floor. And the clever thing here is that we have eight of these individual pieces. We've assembled them, but now we will disassemble them and carry them into place one by one. It's well, a lot of work, and the question that comes to mind is why not just use one piece of steel? Yeah, it is a lot of work, and it is not. Uh, if you had a piece of steel, it would probably be less expensive than all those members, but very difficult to maneuver. The advantage of those uh, pieces of wood is that they could be erected one at a time, mm -hmm. put in place, and then bolted together. This could be done easily by a couple of workmen, yeah. while a piece of steel would be extremely difficult yeah. to deal with. Well, the workmen are in place, but before we figure out about installing it, Rene, let's talk a little bit about the actual conditions that you found here in the house. 
Well, when the ceiling was removed, uh, we find more or less what you could see right now, except that there was no temporary shoring. Uh -huh. uh, this is somewhat of a frightening situation. Indeed. Uh, which was uh, actually uh, hidden by the ceiling. Yes. So we've put all the temporary shoring on either side of this uh, floor structure, and we'll be putting that large beam spanning from the outside wall to a point over here where Riley's uh, working. Let's look closely at this situation, though, because it's hard to understand how this enormous member that carries all that load transfers down to the ground. Well, we created that column, which is uh, built of four two by, uh, eight two by eight, two by fours, Eight two-by-fours, two all by fours. spiked together, right? That is true. And uh, the load will come from the beam to the column. Then it will come down to a steel plate, which will distribute the load on the pier underneath. OK. That you could see through that and hole. And that's an original brick pier that's in good condition. This is an originally brick pier, which is in good condition. And does the building code require that you design and manufacture a steel uh, uh, brace like this to hold this column in place? Well, that steel brace was very much designed for that very specific situation. So that but it no is important that everything be connected to each other, as in Boston. Yeah. There is a chance of earthquake, and this should be tight. And it, there's no chance for movement. And then exactly. at the other side, do you have to do the same thing? Well, at the other side, we were fortunate to have a column which existed already. As you could see, you have a 4 by 8 the hardwood column, which is approximately 30 foot in height. 30 uh, feet in height. So this yes, was really this a key member of the original frame here. Exactly, exactly. We, uh, we will have to interrupt that column in order to set in the beam and have it supported by this column. Yes. Very slight reinforcement will be needed to this column to prevent the buckling of the column as it is somewhat small for the large beam which is going to be supported on top. All right, and then this of course transfers down to our existing stone foundation. Exactly. Have you examined that foundation? Are yes. you sure it's in good condition? Well, we looked at it uh, very specifically as we knew that uh, such a large load was going to come on top of it. And we feel comfortable about that. Good. I'll take that in writing. Rene, thanks for coming by. I know you've yeah. got to get back to the office. And Riley, you yeah. and uh, Donnie from uh, uh, Fort yeah, Hill Construction Dan, here in yep. Boston. Dan, you guys are ready to start chopping away at some of this? Yeah, we just uh, got our line snapped, and uh, this, is a, this is a mess up here. So what we're, I mean, this was a carrying petition, it's just gone and everything is just hanging. So It's gonna, unbelievable, it was just <clears> hidden, you know, it's too be, bad, behind the plaster ceiling. Right, so what we're gonna do is just uh, take a swath right down the middle here, just take it all right out and then slip this beam in, into place and that's gonna, that's gonna carry it. We'll hang everything off of the beam. Yeah, I hate to say it, but many instances of, of situations like this come from early 20th century plumbing jobs. Yeah. where a fine balloon frame from the 19th century uh, was altered and the plumbing pipes were being hidden, as is the case directly overhead and yeah. in various places of the frame. And anyway, what we look at uh, almost 100 years later is uh, a mess. A mess. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Okay. Not much to that one, just pulling it off, but How's that. Okay. Well, Riley, this is the really tedious part. I think we'll take a break for some messages. Don't go away. All right, we're back. And this is kind of a very important moment in the history of this house because we're about to start restoring the structure. My head is essentially on the second floor and my feet are on staging down here in the first floor in the kitchen area. And we've cut out all the different pieces of lumber 
structural pieces, if you will, that had been compromised, cut up. And we're about to start building this beam that I showed you about. I've got Danny, I've got Riley, I've got Anthony, I've got me. Can we st start to fit the first one? Uh, yeah. Everybody be very careful coming up with heads and stuff because it's tight quarters. And there we go. They sit on a specially made steel bed. About a half an inch to go there. And we will be literally putting eight of these together side by side. Using through bolts at what, every two or three feet? Every uh, 16 inches, staggered. Yeah. And at this point, you've cut all these back perfectly so that really, these will be tied into this new beam, right? Right. These will all get hung from the new beam. Okay. That was in place. All right. We're ready to bring some more up. Okay. Okay. All right. Here comes number two. And these, of course, are maxi lamps. They're not just timber. They're laminated beams, right? Yep. There's three, another five to go. There you go. It's gonna... Back it up. comes the last one. Yep. All right, you got it, Dan? Good. Okay. All right, which one do you want to do first of the uh, bolts? That one right over your head. You got your impact wrench? Yeah. Let me get it started. Oh, that's nice. Okay, this one next. All right. Boy, that makes it easy. It sure does. <laughs> Makes it easy, huh? Sure does. But well, we've got about another dozen of these to do, so we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll be getting together with our plumber, Frank Idarol. Don't go away. All right, Frank Idarol is not only going to be our plumbing contractor on this job, but also HVAC, right? Right. And what do you think about this heating system that well, we have? Well, we've got a 40-year-old dinosaur here, Bob, that was uh, installed originally with an oil burner, and uh, recently it's been converted to a conversion gas burner. Probably in the last 10 years. Probably in the last 10 years. Uh, and this system replaced the original 1895 gravity warm air system that was hand-fired with cola wood. Yeah. So my advice is just to throw this thing out and start from scratch. It's woefully inefficient. Inefficient. In a house that isn't insulated. So right. that's another story. But I want to talk about the plumbing because okay. we've, we've got a number of new baths and such. And I'm really trying to fully develop this basement. And one of the things that I want to do in this area over here is to create a, a, a family workshop. Right. Not just a woodworking shop, but a repair shop, you know, a hobby place. Right. And uh, one of the problems is banging your head uh, into the waste pipes. Right. Well, we've uh, alleviated that problem by tearing out all of the waste pipes and all of the ductwork and mm -hmm. digging these trenches. Mm -hmm. All of the main waste stacks from the individual bathrooms, one here, one here, and one there, 
will all intersect at one point in this underground. And this is well below grade. Don't you have to worry? Don't you have to end up pumping the waste out of the house? No, because the invert is well below this, and we have the uh, usual quarter inch per foot to the exit of the uh, soil pipe. So the sewer the line is sufficiently deep outside right. the house. Okay. Right. All right, so then you're picking everything up here and branching off in this direction. And here's where we have the original cast iron wastes coming from everything that was up right. there, right? This feeds the half bath, a powder room, if you will, on the first floor. What Which would... we've kept in place for a few weeks so that uh, workmen would have a place to, you know, to use. Exactly. So what we're going to do is remove this end clean out here and then tie all of the uh, soil pipe that we just uh, discussed yeah. right back into this fitting right here. Yeah, you can the... barely see it, but what we've got here is top of a hub. Exactly. And the cast iron waste going off in that direction towards the street. Right. It's about a foot below the, uh, the grade. Now, the important thing when you're demolishing cast iron waste pipe is to start at the top, right? Exactly. Let's go upstairs. Thank you. Let's take a stop on the second, second floor a minute, Frank. And I'm going to put you on the spot. Why do plumbers do this? L look at the condition of the framing here. Well, you can blame integrity, I guess, uh, because they removed the integrity from the building with lack of integrity of their own. I don't know. Uh, but the here's the... Uh, Here's the four inch cast iron soil pipe that comes up from the basement that mm -hmm. we talked about in the underground. And you can see where they cut this joist out right here. Right. They did similar things all the way around. Uh, this was probably the original stack that was put in the turn of the century. And then it went to uh, PVC pipe, which was right there that was probably put in in the early 70s. Yeah. So every and time somebody came in here and when the advent of good reciprocating saws, man, what a mess we've got. Didn't leave you much. No. Well, let's go up to the top and see what we're taking apart there. Sure. All right, now up here, we do have some of the early plumbing, right? Some of the stuff that we're looking at here? Yes, we have uh, brass threaded pipe, which is probably original with the house at yeah. this point. And then at a later time, back in here, we have copper tubing, which dates from the 40s to today's modern uh, plumbing, water now, piping. Now, we, we've got to remove everything because of the new layout, right? Exactly. This stack is going because uh, this wall is going to be moved forward about a foot. And the uh, vent that we put in is going to be only two inch. And none of this material can be reused? No, it's all junk. Yeah. It's all junk. Tell us about this tool that he's using up there, huh? Uh, that's a ratchet soil pipe cutter. And uh, what it does is it's a series of uh, cutting wheels that are compressed with it. Whoa. And he just snapped it. <laughs> uh, so we, we have a cut that was made previously up above, and we have another one here. Now, uh, we probably won't be able to remove the pipe until he makes at least one cut here and another one on a horizontal line. Yeah. Then we'll be able to pull it out because we've got a lot of weight here. Why are you concerned about saving the, the, uh, the pipe where it goes through the roofs? Just well, so we don't have to reflash it? We, uh, we've got some nice copper flashing hi-hats up there nice. that uh, probably were made at the time the house was built. Yeah. And these never wear out. We want to just keep those so that uh, it blends with the architecture. All right. Well, thanks a lot. We'll be seeing you again. We've got a break for some messages. And when we come back, I want to check in with Riley down in the kitchen. Stick around. Okay, we're back, and now we're doing the easy part of this job. The beam's in place, and we're simply attaching joist hangers, two-inch joist hangers, to the existing timbers. The existing joists in here are all full-dimensional, two-inch. And then we just, what size nails do you use with these? Just using uh, inch and a half uh, joist hanger nails. Galvanized. Galvanized. And then it's inside. Boy, don't you love that? Oof. Well, we're running out of time, friends. Hope you can join me again. Next week, we're going to be doing some of the shingle repairs to the exterior sidewall of the house, and we'll be taking you on a tour of a shingle mill out west. Till then, I'm Bob Vila. It's good to have you home again.